Hello students, welcome back to my kitchen, which has been converted into my new entrepreneurial endeavor, the bird kitchen. That's right, I've taken my love of science to new fields. I'm going to be feeding the birds, who are my customers. Uh, unfortunately, I've totally forgotten what all of them ordered. So I need your help. I'm hoping that you can help me match up these foods that I have prepared for my bird customers. And you should see a picture here in front of you of the different birds with their the tools that match up with their beaks, as well as the foods that I have in front of me. If you have my uh, Google slideshow too, there will be a place for you to match up your guesses as to which food matches with which bird. Talk you through some of them real quick. We've got some fish here, represented by these corks floating in water. We've got some aquatic plants, represented here by these tea leaves. We've got a little nectar inside of a flower. We have a mouse. We have this medium-sized fish, although he's bigger than those fish, so that's okay. We have some peanuts, representing peanuts. And we have some little worms living inside of this sand, as well as some tiny bugs hidden inside bark. If you haven't already, go ahead and see if you can match up these foods with the birds that are going to be eating them based on their body features. All right, have you made your guesses? Don't go on until you've made your guesses. Pause if you need some more time. Let's take a look, see if we can mash up the way these birds work and the features that they have with what they're going to be eat, eating and talk about how animals survive by adapting to the foods that are available to them. Let's start off with the one I think is the easiest. That's my friend right here, the hummingbird. And you might have had a good clue for this if somebody in your family, like I do, loves to feed birds and see birds in their backyard because the color of the food you feed hummingbirds for real is often the color of the food I have out in front of me. And it's this, the nectar inside of the flower. This pipette fits perfectly down in there. We can squeeze and pull out some of that nectar. Hummingbirds like to eat this nectar. And in fact, they're not designed to eat any of these other foods. An interesting fact about hummingbirds is that their beaks don't open, much like the uh, echidna that we read about uh, a few units back in reading. They just have this long beak and their tongue can stick out to pull in the nectar from the flowers that they visit. They wouldn't really be able to eat the peanuts uh, or the rat or dig through the sand at all. This is the only food that fits for them. Let's see, which one should we do next? Uh, this one's another one that seems fairly easy if you know what this tool is already. You can put a couple of clues together. This right here, this tool that matches up with the cardinal, is a nutcracker. If you know that this is a nutcracker, then you'll probably have guessed that this matches up with the peanuts. And that's what cardinals are good at eating, right? They have these short, stubby, strong beaks, and when they grab onto these seeds, they're able to pop them, pull them open really easily, uh, compared to what I can do with those smaller seeds they eat from my bird seed and pull out the seeds or nuts that are inside. Cardinals gonna fit right here with this. They wouldn't really be very good at A, at catching fish because their beaks are so small, uh, but B, at really doing anything with them uh, once they had them, unless they needed to be crushed. Let's try one that's a little bit trickier. Let's try one of these two in the water here. Based on the pictures that I've shown you of these birds, which ones would you expect to eat food out of the water? Hopefully you guessed a duck, right? We see this duck here in our picture in the water, and he has this strainer representing his beak, his tool here. Ducks are really good at grabbing things from underwater, and their bill is specially designed to strain that water out so that they can eat what's left inside of their mouth. Between our two water-filled dishes here, the one that makes the most sense for the duck is the aquatic plant. It can strain out all of these plants that it wants to eat. I don't know how well you can see that from either of my cameras. It can strain out all of these plants that it wants to eat, 
and swallow those without swallowing all of the water inside of the pond or the lake wherever they're swimming. Knock that one off. I think I'll set that over here. Which one's left to eat in the water? You kind of see this guy, the curlew here, with some water. Uh, but hopefully you guessed the pelican. He's this one right here. If you've never seen a pelican eat, they're so interesting. That picture kind of shows just a little bit of what they can do there. But their uh, throats can swell up really huge. They can grab really large fish inside of those big buckets. So we're uh, demonstrating that here with this measuring cup. And they're just perfect at scooping through the water. <laughs> Pelicans are better at it than I am. Pelicans are perfect at scooping through the water and pulling out that fish and then swallowing it. Again, they wouldn't really be very good at uh, eating bugs from a tree, right? Their, their mouth doesn't have a lot of utility for pecking into the tree or for cracking nuts, but they're great at scooping and swallowing. Same thing with the duck. I didn't compare that to any of the others. It could strain through this sand, but the sand isn't gonna flow out through the filter the same way. And then also you've got a mouthful of sand, not a great tool for digging through the sand to find your food. Let's see, what do we have left? How about our hawk? It's represented by these scissors. Hawks have very sharp, both talons and beaks. They're hooked for grabbing onto things. And you probably guessed this one too. Our hawk here matches up with our mouse. Poor mouse. Okay? Our hawk isn't really made for cracking things open, right? Although it could probably grab these things with it. It'd have a really hard time digging through the sand or digging into a tree, but it's just perfect for reaching down and grabbing a small mammal like this mouse. Oh, help. I'm gonna put him back. There you go, little buddy. And we'll set this tool back too. Next, we have our heron. Now, a heron is another bird if you've seen them around. I see them sometimes in my backyard in the little uh, creek that flows through there. Herons also like to be near water, especially lots of clean water where they go fishing. They're also really good at hunting frogs. And uh, this right here, this fish or this frog, is a good example for our heron. They actually use their tools both to pick up, although this is kind of a hard <laughs> avocado for me to pick up with my chopsticks. Another thing that they're very good at using those beaks for is for stabbing into and grabbing small fish or frogs. This is the way they'll catch things, stab them with that sharp pointy bill, pick them up, and then toss them into their mouths. <clears throat> All right, two more. We're down to, we've been keeping track, our sand and our bark with bugs inside. This here, the curlew, although these tweezers are a lot smaller, as you can see, than the curlew's bill. Hopefully I'll put his picture right up here because I think he looks so funny. Um, that beak though is perfectly designed for what he does, which is sift through sand. Hopefully you guess sift through the sand. He can kind of nudge it around without getting all that sand in his mouth. And then as soon as he sees that worm, he's able to snatch it up with the tip of his tweezer-like beak and pull it out and eat it. He picked this dish. Okay, same thing with that and with this. Although the tweezers themselves would be pretty good at pulling out, maybe not as good as I thought, at some of these bugs from the wood, the curlew with its really long beak compared to its body wouldn't be very good at holding onto a tree and digging through the bark to get to the insects hiding inside. Much better at standing and sifting through that sand than at digging through wood. Last one, which means there's only one left. We're left with our buddy here, the woodpecker. He's got a pretty strong beak, right? And a pretty strong head too. So he can peck holes into the bark that he's on, uh, both to make his nest and also to find food, right? With That's represented here by our sponge. He can tear some holes into the sponge as he's pecking and reach through inside and grab out those insects. Were you able to match up all the birds with the food that they ordered from my bird restaurant? How could you tell which bird matched up with which? 
Does it go along with what we've been talking about for body features that help animals to survive? Make some noticings about birds that you see nearby and see if you can guess what they eat this week based on their body features. We're going to continue studying that both in humans and in other animals as we continue to talk about super survivors. Thanks for joining me today in the bird kitchen. Have a good day.